Okay, you can you can be in the picture, no problem. We'll be in the picture. So, a więc jesteśmy przed Allah, Allah, Allah. przed hotelem Renaissance, który jak widać przyciąga artystów z całego świata. Okazuje się, że mieszkał tutaj kiedyś Jerzy Kosiński, a za chwilę rozpoczniemy ekskluzywny wywiad z Jean-Michel Jarre specjalnie dla RTL 7. Renaissance Hotel. Jak widzicie, nie było łatwo tutaj się dostać. Ten gentleman nawet został poraniony przez tłum fanów, którzy szturmowali wnętrze, aby spotkać się blisko z Jean-Michel Jarre. My mieliśmy to szczęście, by rozmawiać z nim o kowódko. I realized that the 90s are probably, uh, uh, it's, it's time to uh, recognize, uh, because it's sign of the times in, in my opinion, that uh, it's good to take both of both worlds. In other, in other, in other words, in other words, I mean the, uh, the digital instruments after the first generation of electronic instruments, I mean, became very uh, uh, based on the, the sample things, you know, on the, uh, the fact that you are uh, starting from uh, tiny parts of existing sounds, like in a collage or, or mosaic type of concept. And what I like in the first generation of electronic instruments mm -hmm. that are totally unique in all history of music is the fact that you can create your sound, fiction sounds, the sounds you have in your mind. I mean, with a piano or violin, for instance, you you obviously playing uh, sounds that have been done by the craftsmen who, who did the instrument. Mm -hmm. uh, you can be your own craftsman with these in instruments. And for me, uh, these instruments could become probably the Stradivarius, you know, these instruments yeah. done in the 17th century uh, for the future. So I, I had the idea of doing the development of oxygen um, because the, I, I did oxygen with a very special state of mind, with just few instruments, the first electronic instruments mm -hmm. ever done, and uh, in a, with a craftsmanship attitude. And I wanted to, to use this state of mind again to develop a, a, a concept uh, of music that, in my opinion, is probably very in sync with the end of the century. And it's funny that when I started this, uh, this project, then a lot of uh, uh, younger techno acts started to remix some of my work and also uh, uh, some people have said that they've, they've been influenced by my work. I mean, all this seemed to me quite uh, logical to uh, uh, do this development and work on textures and layers of sounds and not only on melodies, but really being like a painter with music. With an analog synthesizer, you are you can really shape the sounds and the frequencies in a very organic way, in an immediate way. You can you 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 you, you can't, for instance, memorize sounds like in the digital uh, with digital instruments. You are constantly in danger. I mean, everything is instant. Is the reason why that so many uh, DJs these days are using analog stuff? It's because of of this kind of uh, magic of the instant that you can, uh, that any artist wants. I mean, a painter uh, can't d do the same drawing twice. With computers, you can do the same drawing a million times. And with analog instruments, you can't repeat the same sound. And, and so it, it, it gives uh, a totally different relationship with your own creative process, in a sense. I really feel like a beginner. I, I always felt that uh, my work is a series of uh, unfinished projects that I and, and each one is probably trying to uh, improve the previous one and uh, Fellini the, the Italian movie director used to say that uh, uh, each he always done the same movie all his life with the hope that one day we'll get one right mm -hmm. and I, I totally agree with this if you have one thing if you have something to say to the audience to do it's 
you have only one thing to, to, to do. And it's by uh, the same proposal, it's by repeating the same proposal over and over again that you can improve what you have to, what you have to say. And it's by staying authentic vis-à-vis -vis yourself, trying to, to improve like a craftsman uh, is uh, doing a table. Yeah. Always the same table, all his life with the idea of getting, getting one uh, ideal table one day. I know you are also a painter. Can you find some similarities between painting and creating new sounds in music? Absolutely. I think it's uh, very similar. It's the reason why analog instruments, particularly on what you're saying, are really the, the ideal instruments when you uh, want to approach music with a vision, with, with a uh, vision state of mind. Uh, a visual state of mind. For instance, when when uh, um, when you are mixing frequencies and sounds, you are like uh, painters mixing colors, or you are like a sculpture modeling clay, in a very organic way, a very sensual way. And it's it could it could uh, be uh, it certainly uh, can sound rather strange for the audience listening at us right now talking about electronics and and uh, and and being sensual and, and organic mm -hmm. but it's true i mean if you ev everybody knows that if you take a camera like this that this man has at the moment or, or uh, an, an old camera for instance yeah. or, or or any walkman you have you have a kind of 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 a sensual approach to technology these days and these instruments have been the first one to to include this kind of uh, aesthetic and almost sensual approach to, to sounds. And I like shaping sounds like uh, being in a, in a kitchen cooking dishes. The idea of sharing uh, a kind of creative process in a, in a certain sense with the audience. When, and and uh, not by sharing, obviously, the fact that we are going to play with uh, 2,000 hands on the same keyboard. That is ridiculous. But with the idea that when you are doing music without lyrics, you let the audience free to create their own images, their own story, their own feeling in their mind. And I wanted to, to, uh, to uh, uh, emphasize that to also the visual performance by uh, uh, setting some uh, outdoor events and the outdoor concert that could uh, uh, integrate architecture, environment, uh, the idea of hijacking, pirating a district, a building for one night yeah. in a, in a one-off kind of situation mm -hmm. and uh, where you have no second chance. And we, we all like, as human beings, things that happen just once. And because these are, most of the time, the events you remember that, that last. A lot of people can, can, rem uh, can remember the first time they, w they went to a circus, to a theater, to a rock concert, to a... To a uh, to a sports event uh, in a church, in a museum. In, I mean, to, to discover a new experience and sharing it for, for once, for, for one moment. Like when you see the eclipse of the sun, for instance. Suddenly you have everybody in the streets just sharing this because you, you know that it's not going to, to, to happen again, to happen again next Saturday night. It's what I tried to establish with this, uh, with this project and paintings and uh, expressions, uh, words, used by the music business and by the show business like targets and market shares and all that because actually if you're able to express yourself with, a, with paintings, with, uh, with words, with the colors, I mean it basically can be for, for anybody. And I, I really, obviously I'm really pleased to see in the audience uh, people involved in techno music as well as families or young kids or elder people uh, and uh, it's uh, what uh, I like in this new experiment, because I always ex tried, it, tried new experiments in my life, and this indoor tour, the first indoor tour for me, is a new experience in itself, a new experiment in itself. And this open-air concert needs a lot of work, I mean, on the logistic way, and it takes uh, a year to organize the, the big extravaganza like that. And how do you feel uh, like an organizer? It's a, it's a real adventure. It's, a, it's, a, it's like... A, it's like shooting Apocalypse Now in one night, but with a pre-production time of one year. And uh, uh, it's, uh, it's in, in a sense, uh, it's, uh, it's what makes this whole, uh, this whole adventure very exciting on a human level, because it's a fantastic opportunity to, to uh, meet with a range of totally different people. I mean, you, you, you have, uh, in those projects, you, you, have, uh, uh, you meet with uh, 
dancers, philosophers, politicians, uh, police, uh, uh, rappers, uh, uh, graphic artists, uh, sound designers, uh, fashion designers. Uh, uh, I mean, basically, anybody. And that's really great because suddenly you have all these people coming from totally different fields. I mean, all together in a kind of crew for the same project. And that's, that's really the part of the magic as well. I think that's the normal way of, of doing for, for an artist. I mean, I, I, I think it's very important to, to be as generous as possible with the audience and to, to share the emotions and to share the creation on an emotional level. But the creative process is like, again, when you are in a kitchen, you can't share the oven. I mean, you have to be in control of, of everything, because then you are responsible of the fact if your dish is good or, or not good, and then you can share the dish. But when you are, when, when you are dealing with uh, the ingredients and all that, it's safer to, to, to try to, to control in a, in a flexible way, in a, in, in an elegant way, in a sense, not not by just imposing your views, but I mean, obviously it's a teamwork. But I mean, you have you need uh, somehow somebody driving these various forces; otherwise, it, it can't happen. I would like to know what kind of feeling is that when you are just starting a concert and you have to conduct all this complicated machinery. No, I mean it's like uh, it's it's like also in a sense conducting an, orche an orchestra, or uh, in a very uh, with craftsmanship attitude. I always felt that these projects and all the projects I've been involved with are, are projects where the craftsmanship attitude is essential. All the projects I've done are not coming from Hollywood. They are, not, they are more coming from uh, our culture as, as Europeans, where we have to fight and you know what it is in your country, like also in mine in the past. I mean, we have to, to find ways to, to do things because it's difficult, everything is difficult. And these difficulties are what makes the project unusual. I really love uh, a sentence that Jack Kennedy said when, once when he launched the, the program to the moon. He said, we are going to the moon not because it's easy, but because it's difficult. The uh, Oriental cultures, Chinese, Japanese cultures a lot, but also uh, the European cultures. And, uh, the, and when I say the European cultures, it's because we have a lot of various cultures. I mean, what makes the European culture is this kind of mosaic of, 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 of uh, writers and, and musicians and painters. And, and more I go, more I, I feel uh, uh, a European in a, not, not in a political sense of, of but, but in, the, in a kind of humanist type of, of way. And you have played already with Far East musicians. What kind of lessons can you get from them? Uh, that what's important in music is silence yeah. between notes. Absolutely, because I, I can tell you something that a few years ago I've done a, con a concert and some people thought that, was, that I was a devil worshipper by dealing with all this technology. And a few years later now, uh, the electronic instruments became the most popular instruments in the world. I think what happened with the organ, it's a very good an analogy. It, ex it, happened exactly, it's a, it happened exactly the same for synthesizers and electronic instruments. And how do you find the critic that uh, you're not playing rock or even pop music, but that it's, uh, it's kind of music good for lifts or supermarkets? I mean, you know, in, in lifts, as long as I'm accompanied with uh, Miles Davis, Mahler and the Beatles, it's all right. I, I feel that uh, uh, there is a lot of similarities and a lot of links with the techno scene, uh, the techno acts and techno scene. I mean, I really respect a lot bands like Underworld and Chemical Brothers, Prodigy and Orbital. These bands are not pure tech, not doing techno music, but they are in the techno field. And what techno is these days, I mean, for the audience, apart from ghettos of some specialists, and I hate specialists, including in techno or in, uh, anywhere. I mean, techno is just means, means electronic music in general, all kinds of ele electronic music. And uh, uh, what I like with, uh, uh, with the attitude of techno acts these days is the, this kind of uh, uh, very fresh attitude towards technology, towards music. Uh, I mean, dealing, parroting constantly technology. Who could have said that a turntable could become one of the major instruments in the, in the 90s? Uh, nobody 
taught me how to be to, to do synthesizers at a time where even the world of synth the word synthesizer was not existing. Uh, these days, nobody can teach you to become a DJ. A DJ has to create his own his own, its own virtuosity, its own his own technique, and. Uh, and uh, there is also this kind of organic, almost sensual approach to sound, that everything has to be done by hand and uh, it's not going to be repeated. And all these elements are very close to the way I feel music more and more. So I think there is, in a sense, uh, uh, a true authentic link between uh, uh, what I'm doing and what some people from the techno scene are doing. I think that uh, where the techno and a lot of techno people are uh, and privileging the, uh, the beat and maybe privileging more the textures and the evolution of layers and textures of music. I'm not trying to uh, just concentrate on, on a g melodic gimmick, but really trying to, to get a kind of progression, organic progression in textures, like abstract painting, where it's not so much the, the, uh, the, the, the representation that is important, but, but the work of on thickness and 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 shadow and light and and all this and, and dealing with other things in a more mineral organic way. And you have been named an ambassador of goodwill by UNESCO. What does this mean practically? I mean, uh, I mean, being ambassador for tolerance is a big honor, but also a big challenge because these days. I mean, what makes Monet is basically through TV, through movies, through everything, through, through rock, rock and roll, is violence, uh, crime, war. I mean, this makes this is make this makes Monet because it's dynamic on, 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 on in a movie, and uh, it's much more dynamic than uh, peace or tolerance because these concepts are basically neutral. And uh, the challenge for an artist, and what I've been asked by UNESCO, is through my day-to-day -day life as an artist, to try to, to, to maybe promote or give a kind of dynamic uh, image to the idea of tolerance. And when you are, for instance, gathering s different people in the street without uh, social barriers, where everything is gathering the same moment, uh, it's, a, it's something different. It's only much more difficult to, to, do, uh, to be not in a silly way uh, optimistic, but being positive about about things is quite a challenge because it's much more, it's much easier to express yourself being obscure, being dark. I mean, darkness is always has always been something quite easy to deal with as an artist. But if you take Mozart, for instance, mm -hmm. that is the ultimate achievement in music, and it's always something that can carry. Uh, can carry a lot of depth, I mean, sadness or things, but most of the time it's very positive and, and uh, it's what li I like actually in, uh, in Austrian classical music. A lot of composers, uh, you have very few composers who have, who have succeeded in uh, doing music in a, in a very positive way. I mean, Mozart, the Beatles, Strauss, Nino Rota, mm -hmm. not a lot. What's interesting in music without words is you're not carrying a message. In a song, you are carrying a message. What, what's interesting with, uh, with uh, music without lyrics is you, 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 can carry, you can carry interfaces and needs and tools and, and means for you to create the message. It's, it's something else. Yeah, I, I wouldn't agree with you by saying that I close a circle. I think I see my work as a spiral and, uh, you know, like the snail shape. I mean, it's like this. And it's by, by doing this new oxygen, it's more opening a circle. I would say that uh, it's very important at one, at one stage to recognize your roots also and to use them to, to grow, to grow up. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I de I'm definitely convinced that uh, these instruments that I use at the beginning of, of, uh, of my life as, a, as an artist, I will continue to use them. Not all the time, but from time to time. And there is no, there is no progress in terms of emotions. There is no like, like, in, like you can have in technology. I mean, you use what you want to use to express feelings of, of, our, of, of our times. Whatever you use, a tam-tam, a violin or a computer, uh, I mean, what's important is the emotions you give 
you're able to express through these instruments.